self-awareness is the road to happiness. If you want to have a true happiness, joy, passion, abundance, success in your life, you should improve your self-awareness. You should develop your self-awareness. Self-awareness is the road to success, is the road to abundance, is the road to health, is the road to love and to your happiness. When you are aware of yourself, of your own reaction, of your own feelings and your own emotions, then you can see opportunities that life gives you. Then you can see how you can achieve your goals faster and you can understand yourself and this world much better and easier. I already spoke about two enemies of self-awareness, which are deletion and generalization. And today I will talk about the third one, which is distortion. And this is my favorite. If you didn't see the videos about deletion and generalization, all links will be below this video. So stop this one, watch other two, and then come back to the third one. And before we start, my name is Lena Semenek and welcome! This is my YouTube channel Psychology of Happiness, where happiness is the purpose of life. If you're new, subscribe so you won't miss new exciting topics about health, love, money, abundance. Okay, let's start talking about self-awareness and distortion. I prepared three examples for you so you can understand how distortion works. Distortion is a behavior pattern, behavior mechanism when we distort, change the information and uh, this is gonna bring us to the wrong result, to the false conclusion. So three examples for you and the first one is about relationship. When a woman is saying he never brings me flowers so he does not love me. Uh, in this case she puts flowers equals love. So this is a false conclusion. And in order to show that woman a false conclusion, I would use the questions like this. Uh, so how can you measure love? How many flowers do you need to know that he loves you? One flower every day, or maybe you want, you know, dozen of roses every week. Should it be red roses, yellow roses, or white roses? So can you measure love based on the flowers that he brings you? When you start asking specific questions like how, what color, how many, when, how often, you can notice distortion. Also very good to go backwards. So for example, you can say, okay, he does not love you uh, because he never uh, gave you flowers, correct? So how can you measure love? Let's start from the result. So you know that he does not love you based on what? And when you start from the result, the person will start giving you more than one reason. So usually it's not only one reason. Second example, my mom drives me crazy or my work drives me crazy. So in this situation with the mom, for example, you can say, so every time when you see your mother, you are in a good, perfect mood. And the minute you see her, bam, she drives you crazy. What specifically did she say that day? Can you quote it how she drives you crazy? Can you mm, tell me more details about the last time when you saw her? Or for example, my work drives me crazy. So you can say every person, every employee, every co-worker drives you crazy. Every one of them, no matter who you're talking to or specific people drive you crazy. So when you ask specific questions, when you start dividing people, kids, work, uh, situations into small parts, then you can see how distortion works. And the third common mechanism of distortion is when we or other people assuming that we can read their mind. So when the person is saying, I did not tell you that because I knew you would not believe. Or a person is saying, of course no one will believe me. Or like, I already know his answer, what's the point? I'm not gonna go to my boss and ask for promotion because I already know that he will say no to me. So in this case, you can say, wow, I did not know that you can read people's mind. In this case, sense of humor is really good because you can uh, ask the person funny questions like, wow, can you read my mind? Do you know what uh, my boyfriend is thinking right now? 
Distortion is the hardest behavior mechanism compared to deletion and generalization. Distortion is very hard to detect, especially in yourself. Uh, we are so creative. We put so deep, uh, crazy connections between one situation and another, and it feels solid, and it feels reality, and it feels real. And we also add emotions and feelings, so it feels even more real. So distortion is extremely hard and is the biggest enemy of self-awareness. In order to reduce distortion, my advice is try to record yourself. When you talk to our family members, when you talk to your friends, just turn on the recorder on your cell phone and record you know, an hour conversation with your friends. When you're gonna play what you recorded, try to notice, to catch words like no one, always, I must, I have, of course, everyone knows. And once you catch those words, replay the full sentence and then write down your full sentence and start asking yourself questions uh, like, how can I know? Uh, how often do I notice this? Uh, when was it the last time? When was it the first time? Am I 100% sure in this statement? And then you can start questioning yourself and when you start asking yourself specific details questions you will notice how distortion is um, taking you out from self-awareness from developing self-awareness let's summarize there are three enemies of self-awareness deletion generalization and distortion if you did not see uh, the other two videos the links will be below so in order to be aware of what's happening in your life, you need to be aware of your own patterns. You need to understand yourself. And for that, you have to practice, practice and practice. Uh, ask your questions below, share your thoughts. Uh, tell me uh, maybe some situations about your life and maybe I can help you to find your pattern, uh, your pattern that's stopping you from self-awareness. Share this video with your friends, post on your Facebook, Twitter, subscribe to my channel, click the bell icon for notifications of new videos that I release every week. And thank you for watching Psychology of Happiness, where happiness is the purpose of life.